In this video, I'm going to discuss the biggest mistakes that new residential assisted living owners do uh, along with the biggest mistakes that I've done as a residential assisted living owner. So if you're interested, make sure to stick around. What's going on everyone? I hope you're all doing well. If you're new here, my name is Serge. Welcome to the channel. To all my reoccurring viewers, thank you so much for all the love and support that each and every single one of you have shown this channel. I definitely appreciate it. And if you have not yet, feel free to check out the God Made podcast on all streaming platforms. Also feel free to check out Legion Assisted Living Academy and Legion Assisted Living Advisors down below. I also do one-on-one -on -one consultation calls. That link will also be down below. You can go check out my calendar and whatever time fits your schedule, go ahead and schedule it. And also if you're interested in passively investing in residential assisted living or in assisted living in general, uh, feel free to go check out the link down below at Valley ALF Ventures. Go ahead, uh, submit your questionnaires after you click into the investors tab. And with all that being said, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the topic of this video. Now, there's a lot of mistakes that happen in business, but specifically res with residential assisted living, there's a lot of mistakes that new residential assisted living owners make. And the very first one is not doing the proper market research within the area that they're looking to start the residential assisted living. Reason why I say this is strictly because there has to be a demand for a residential assisted living facility in that area. And if there isn't, you're most likely not going to succeed and you're definitely not going to be able to make it uh, if the numbers don't work. A lot of people get fixated on the numbers, but those numbers are what are going to help you determine if you're going to succeed or not. So if that market that you're looking to start your residential assisted living cannot handle the rates that you're looking to make this business successful, it is most likely not the market for you to start your residential assisted living. But let's say that you do find a market and it is great and it is something that you will be able to sustain those rates that you're going to be asking for your facility. If that's the case, go ahead and move in on that market. Not financial advice, but just saying if that's the case, you can go ahead and move forward on that market. Once you find the location and once you have the location secured, at this point, what you need to do is make sure that you market locally. A lot of people forget this. A lot of people try to market within the, the whole city that they're in. Um, for instance, here in Phoenix, it's big. Phoenix is really big and there's no point for me to try to market on the west side or even the north side of Phoenix because I am not in that market. My home is not in that market. Now, if you do have businesses and homes in that market and you have multiple locations, then it makes sense. But if you're kind of narrowed down to a certain market, focus only on that market. Don't spend any marketing money in those markets. Just try to focus in locally on your market there. Try to go to all the rehabs. Try to go all the hospitals. Try to go to the different hospices. Try to work with the placement agents that are in that area specifically. Because if at the end of the day you're trying to market to a whole city, you're most likely not benefiting at all from doing that because oftentimes a lot of families want to move in within 15 minutes of wherever your facility is and where they live. So if they live 15 minutes away from your facility, you're most likely going to end up moving one of their loved ones into your facility. If it's further than that, it's very unlikely. Your chances of actually placing someone that lives 15 minutes and further away are less. So just keep that in mind when you're doing that. So first, market research and making sure that you actually market locally, specifically 15 minutes away from your facility. That is really the best way to do it. Now, another mistake that happens is you often scale too quickly. And I know what I'm saying is kind of not contradicting, but a lot of it's counterintuitive. A lot of people want to just scale their business to the point where they can obviously have really great profit margins and be able to have a successful business that they can either eventually sell on the back end. But the point being is that 
when you get your first location, this is what I remember back when I first started, I wanted to have a certain number of facilities by year five. And those were great ambitious goals. What I didn't realize is that it's not as easy as a lot of people make it out to be, especially myself. It wasn't as easy to do that. Now I've learned certain things that will help me scale and do help me scale, um, but in different ways. It's not just me specifically running these facilities. It's other ways of how I do that, and that is something I discuss with the different uh, opportunities I offer not only passive investors, but operators and operators who are looking to sell. That's a whole different topic. But the point being is that when I first started, that was what I was trying to do. I was trying to scale to multiple facilities. Well, I didn't have a system to work off of. I had to learn my systems. I had to implement a system within my current facility in order for me to be able to scale at any point that I wanted to. And that is another mistake that a lot of uh, new residential assisted living owners make is not having a proper system in place, meaning they don't have proper policies and procedures. They don't have best facility practices. They don't train their caregivers properly and their managers properly. And this hinders people from ever even growing their business. They always remain below average or average at most. And that is something that a lot of entrepreneurs in general make is they don't build out their systems. And that takes time. That takes experience learning everything about the business. And that is why I recommend that you implement a proper system within your home your first location and then from there you can start scaling because once you have that narrow nailed down you are able to create a great business out of that a great business model and being able to learn from other people who have done it before you and if you see other people who are scaling and are doing other things Try to get in touch with them. Try to work with them. Try to bring them value of how you can possibly work with them. If you're not providing any sort of value, there's no way other people are going to help you scale your businesses. And that is another mistake people do. They want handouts. They want things for free. But that's not how business works. You have to exchange value for value. That's how it works in business. So don't expect people to just constantly give you advice and give you tips and tricks without providing any value. So before you reach out to me or before you reach out to any other person who could potentially help you, make sure that you bring them value too. Make sure that you are able to help them get what they want as well. And with that being said, those are the main things I'm seeing a lot of residential assisted living owners make and do and these are i take these things as lessons these are lessons that i've learned the hard way but these are things that have helped me grow as a business owner and as an entrepreneur and these are just things that i want to share with all of you who are looking to get whether it be into this industry or uh, passively investing or any other type of uh, industry this is a beneficial video for you all and if it did help you Make sure to hit that like button for me. Make sure to subscribe if you have not subscribed. Check out Legion Assisted Living Academy and Legion Assisted Living Advisors in the links down below. And if you're interested in on, on a one-on-one -on -one consultation call, uh, feel free to check that in the links down below. And also, if you're looking to passively invest, you can check out valleyalfventures.com uh, as well. And thank you so much for all the love, and I will talk to you all in the next video. God bless.